What we have behind me right here is a Gents of Leicester master clock. It's basically a pendulum reminiscent of a grandfather clock uh, in a lovely wooden box. These things were used to keep time in buildings that required clocks to all be in sync around the building. At the top there are a number of different switch contacts. This switch contact gets pushed by the pendulum every two seconds and this one does as well. These two get added together to make a pulse every single second. The next one along is this one. This one sends out a pulse every six seconds. You'll see that every third tooth is slightly deeper and that means that when it goes into the deeper tooth it actually pushes this switch right here. This one has the same principle, however it only has a deeper tooth every 15 teeth, which means that it sends a 30 second pulse out. Here it comes, here it comes wait for it. Oh, three, two, one. Oh no, no, is it 30 seconds? And we push the button. But how does the pendulum keep on uh, penduluming, you say? While pendulums are traditionally driven by spring mechanisms, this one is actually electromechanical. You see this little section right here? What happens is when the pendulum loses slight momentum, what it does is it makes this tooth uh, flick on this switch. Wait for it and it'll happen just then. And what that does is it sends a momentary pulse up into these two coils. These act as electromagnets and when there is that tiny little pulse it attracts that little bit of metal right here causing the pendulum to push a little harder and get momentarily re-energized. How cool is that? In this instance the first place the clock pulses go to is into this clock unit. It's the GMT34 and this was made to go with this master clock. The master clock's pulses are going down to trigger these three relays right here. These relays in turn trigger other relays to help amplify the signal to drive clocks and other things around buildings. And what this one does is it drives a couple of clocks. So every 30 seconds that relay ends up triggering this thing right here. Oh, you saw that then did you? It was that that triggers it. It makes this solenoid push which ends up forwarding this and that ends up sending a pulse out every one hour to a bell or something or in this case a synthesizer. This also in turn triggers this clock right here which is electromechanical. You just saw it flick over there, it's telling completely the wrong time. What this is, is a similar mechanism to the other one. It's uh, basically a solenoid on the back that actually triggers it. This is not modified, this is, this is how these things came. I can just uh, get it to show you it. So you see around the back of this there is an electromagnetic coil and we'll see it, it just flicked then. So it doesn't actually have its own internal timekeeping apparatus, it just waits for a pulse every 30 seconds. Ooh! Oh, one more time, one more time. Ah, there it is. So the aim of the master clock is to run a number of these around the building so they're all in exactly the same time. So there wouldn't just be one of those clocks, there'd be probably one in every single room. Other examples of things that this would sequence are things like this right here. This is in charge of how much somebody would be paying on their phone bill. Ooh. And that would in turn be controlling these displays and find out how much time grandma really spent on the phone to Mabel. Another example of something that this would have kept in sync that's in the museum is the bell programmer which is over being self-programmed at the minute so it can drive a little bit quicker. First off before we go any further let's admire how nice it sounds on its own. Hello Sam from the future here, somebody pointed out that in the energizer circuit right here I was probably sending too much voltage for it because it made the pendulum go uh, which is true, uh, very good observation, I was actually sending 12 volts through this, the coils were already cooked looking but I probably wasn't helping matters and they sent me this picture and it shows that they you know, should be only getting 4 to 6 volts. Uh, this originally was wired into a rechargeable battery, it was constantly getting charged and stuff which kept this thing going. Anyway, it's fixed now. 
Ever since I got hold of this a couple of months ago, I've been thinking of how to make it useful in the museum and also at the same time, how to make the most of it in a musical kind of setting. I can obviously wire in a bunch of clocks around the museum to it and I probably will do that. However, I quickly realized this thing runs at 60 beats per minute, which is a fraction of 120 BPM, which happens to be my favorite tempo. So I figured, wouldn't it be cool to add the option to be able to sync up any of the synthesizers or musical instruments in the museum up to this thing. <laughs> However, there is one glaring problem with this. This runs at 60 BPM and it would only ever send out a clock pulse every second. Imagine the drums just being like that. Is that even 60 BPM? So we need to fill in the blanks between every one of these pulses. In modular synthesizers, there is a technique called ratcheting. So these are the pulses that it's receiving. Dun, dun, dun. And how it tells the future and fills in the blanks to the next pulse that hasn't happened yet. It basically reads the distance between the last two pulses and kind of predicts that will be very similar to the next one. So as long as the distance between the last two pulses is similar to the next one, where well, it'll sound like it's in time and it's playing a multiplication because it'll end up sending pulses in the middle. If you speed up the clock pulse, all it needs is to listen to the last one and it kind of updates and you don't actually really notice the fluctuations because, you know, there's so many clock pulses happening. It's a reasonably complicated job to do a good job of this in an analog manner. That's why in this module, it is a piece of Arduino code. I didn't code this. I built it back in 2017 based on a piece of code by A773. It was originally coded for the Ginkgo Symphys Grains module, which is a Eurorack module with an Arduino Nano behind it. But all I did with this module, because it was such a good piece of code, was basically just break it out and add a few bits of control voltage into it. But it's now time to make use of this nice little piece of code again by A773 in the Pendulum project. And that's where this box comes in right here. As you can see on the back, there's three of the Arduino modules and there's a wire coming from the uh, clock pendulum controller machine. So this thing is in sync. So about four weeks ago, I did a vlog over on Patreon talking about this idea and the shortfalls and a few kind of problems that it had. And an awesome person by the name of Jesse of Cake Industries, which is an artist duo from Australia that make a load of mechatronics sculptures and stuff like that, including musical mechatronics and stuff like that. There's links below if you want to check that out there will also be a cover that they did of Ride. <laughs> Jesse is a bit more codely endowed than myself and managed to spend a bit of time on the Arduino code to make it work a lot better with the pendulum. And amazingly enough, it's blooming awesome now. This is the incoming pulse and these are three separate multiplying dividing modules. The top knob divides so we can actually divide the signal down. It's waiting for it. Uh, oh, I've divided it by four. Now it's there, so we can divide it by two now. Yeah. Now. Let's put it back to normal. This knob multiplies it, so you can multiply it by two, and by four, and so on. And it just goes quicker and quicker and quicker. And Jesse's done a really good job on this because it doesn't wait for the next pulse for you to update this knob. You can do it at any point you want, which is really cool. But this knob is the really cool one. Basically what it does is it can shift the pulse forward. It basically delays it a little bit. So if we put this along, this is the original, and then it kind of delays it. You can shift it forwards. Yeah, let's go like half, and then all the way over it shifts it completely, pretty much, to the end. And that ratio of where it is shifted in between the pulses can be carried through to the multiplications.
How cool is that? You can check out Jesse's adapted code, the link is below, and he's also included a strip or layout of this really nicely, so here it is. And you can send in any pulses and go crazy with this awesome machine. You can hear my voice through the microphone that's recording the pendulum. Let's turn on the delay. Ooh. So that's it for this project today. The next step in this is actually making a more solid digital uh, master clock right here. So you can bounce between the two, whether you want this or if it's, heaven forbid you want a different tempo or something like that. And then after that, it's about building a bunch of these sort of boxes around the whole museum in time for season 2.0. It's one of the many projects that I'm trying to get on with before it opens next, which will be at the start of next year. Oh, exciting. All the links that I've mentioned in this video are available below. And if you want to see videos of what other projects I'm working on at the minute, as well as a 10 minute version of me making a bunch of sounds with this stuff and also some samples if you want to download of the clock pendulum, it be dry or sampled and stuff like that, as well as loads of other samples. It's all available over on my Patreon and the kind support helps towards making these videos kind of possible and also being able to fund the museum, which will be open again at the start of next year. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Luke Mom, no computer. Don't be scared to try it.